ajena. I think we'll start here. This is a uh, second floor, but uh, I believe chronologically this is some of the earliest work. This is titled Rodin the Thinker, 1997 to 1998. This is acrylic, oil polymer, resin, glitter, map pens, and elephant dung. And it's 96 by 72 inches, so that's uh, 8 by 6 feet. Now, like a lot of people, I probably first became aware of Chris Ophelia's work during the uh, controversial sensation show that was organized by Charles Saatchi and presented at the Brooklyn Museum, I believe it was 1999. And, uh, This piece is titled She, 1997. Acrylic oil, polymer resin, paper collage, glitter, map pins, and elephant dung on linen. And uh, one of his pieces that was in that show, I think it was titled The Virgin Mary, I don't know whether it's in this show, maybe we'll see, uh, attracted a lot of controversy because he had collaged in uh, of, uh, <laughs> pornographic clips of uh, female genitalia and also because of his uh, use of these things, the uh, they're calling them elephant dung, elephant droppings. This is titled Blossom. Well, I was at a uh, panel discussion last weekend and Sharada Kotek, who was the curator at the museum at that time, was asked uh, what it was like when Mayor Giuliani uh, buckled down on them and uh, she said, of course it was bad, but we never got such publicity. Okay, so now he's got, he's also got his little map pins spelling out letters on the little Herds. <laughs> anyway, Chris's career has gone on in a meteoric fashion since then, and uh, I always like the work because this is very decorative. This is titled Monkey Magic, Sex, Money, and Drugs. It's also nine by six feet. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about some of his technical procedures. 
So a lot of this looks like it's dealing with little drops of acrylic. And some of these are map pens. It's got glitter. And, uh, well, I've been saying for the last four or five years that uh, I think pattern and decorative is a a popular recurrent theme these days and uh, well we saw Chris Martin show it's a week or so ago and he was using glitter you can see where he is uh, he's poured on splashed on some resin on here so he kind of uh, enjoys playing with the the mediums and material And uh, his accentuated genitalia is also kind of a continuing theme. Oh, this is a beautiful piece. This is tit titled Aphrodisia. Got Nelson Mandela. No, there's Louis Armstrong. Everybody's got the Afro haircuts. So these are very um, tediously worked paintings, and uh, he's also got layers of uh, resin, and so we've got various planes that he's built up his his decorative patterning on. Here is the uh, famous or infamous the Holy Virgin Mary. I cannot step across the black line. Okay, so we'll get as close as we can and then we'll use our telephoto lens. So this is the painting that uh, you got the local Catholic League upset and they called on Mayor Giuliani to cut the funding for the Brooklyn Museum. They had protests going on in front of the museum. This is during the Sensation Show. They had a protest going on there for weeks. And, uh, well, partially it was <laughs> Not only to the, uh, I don't know what you'd call a photo like that. <laughs> and also, this lump of elephant manure. I also think it's interesting the way that um, a lot of Chris's work kind of melds the, the obscene popular porn with the uh, the sacred and a lot of these have got references to uh, classic Christian figures or icons oh this is a beautiful piece too this is titled Foxy Roxy And I just like this coloristically. Also this little uh, strip on the edges where he kind of changes the coloration a little bit, giving you a sense of transparency. And uh, he's a master of his uh, surfaces, using different kitschy materials, but ultimately getting a really luxurious and uh, sensuous surface on these. Well, here are some of the large and horizontal pieces. Uh, I also think it's worth noting that uh, at least with his early work, he is uh, He's treating these paintings very much as objects. He's got them propped up on these 
balls of elephant manure, they're just leaned against the wall. This is also a beautiful piece. This Afro Jezebel. Well, he's uh, he's done a very good job of melding a lot of kind of cutting edge or contemporary painting issues, and also melding in aspects of identity art. Uh, so a lot of this refers to his African heritage and almost to uh, maybe Caribbean or some West African decorative arts. Oh, this is a huge piece. This is titled Afro Nirvana and this is oil acrylic polyester resin aluminum foil glitter maps pins and elephant dung on canvas 108 by 144 so that's 9 by 12 feet well, here's a sculpture titled St. Sebastian, 2007, bronze, stainless steel, and iron. And, uh, oh, I've got a bunch of uh, nails hammered into the figure. It's like an African fetish. Oh, these are horseshoe nails. <laughs> and we've got a uh, an entire wall of his, uh, I think these are watercolor heads, and uh, gosh, I think he had a, a show of these, oh, maybe five or six years ago. I don't know, there's got to be uh, over a hundred of these. Again, even with this uh, simple medium, he's very, very good with his color and composition. God, I like the way that head fills up the space, fills up the page. This is Annunciation, 2006, and uh, this might have been in one of his recent shows at Daffod's Werner. This is bronze, 79 by 84 by 47 inches. And, uh, well, I like the way that uh, he's playing off the <coughs> polished bronze section of the female angel <laughs> versus the, uh, the dark patinaed Male angel. Yeah. Well, we were just on the second floor, and uh, I'm trying to kind of follow this chronologically, so I just ran up the stairs to the fourth floor. So most of these paintings are from the late 2000s. This piece is titled Confession, Lady Chancellor 2007. And uh, I uh, covered a show where this work was uh, presented at David Zorner, I believe, and uh, as you can see, this is a 
stray painting on canvas. He doesn't have any of his uh, pins or glitter or even pores of resin. This is pretty much straight oil painting on linen. And uh, I would also ask you to note that uh, they've really done a marvelous job with the installation. There's Richard Flood. This is a beautiful installation. Isn't it? <laughs> they didn't get you down here with the ladder up there to paint that, did <laughs> no, they? No, they didn't. Boy. No, it's gorgeous. And it's all from, I mean, there were, uh, all the drawings were gridded and done. So he had this all planned out exactly Chris, how he yeah. wanted this. Oh, they did a beautiful job. Yeah. Gallons and gallons of purple paint. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, as I was saying, when he uh, initially showed this body of work, there were a lot of people who were kind of disappointed with uh, this kind of retreat from the uh, heavy, almost Baroque decorativeness. And uh, I think he might have taken a little criticism. Uh, for my part, I was looking at these and sort of thinking that uh, he was delving more into art history. You can see a lot of references to people like Matisse, uh, some of the early modernists. This is a beautiful piece. This is titled Ovid Desire, 2011-2012. With that reference to that little painting up there looks like something from the Barnes Foundation. Uh, here again you can see that he's left a lot of uh, bare linen. Looks like it's maybe just primed with rabbit skin. Oh, and he's got some uh, pearlescence there in some of the paint. This is oil pastel and charcoal on linen, 122 by 78. Oh. This is another nice piece. Over to Action. And uh, I think what uh, Chris probably decided was that he wanted to uh, deal more directly with just color, pigment. And uh, he's got a great sense of line. And it's also nice, you can see the erasures, the erasure through the layers of paint. This is 2011-12, so that's only a couple of years old. It's titled Lime Bar, 2014. Oil on linen, 122 by 78. This is also just straight painting. You know, I'm looking at some of this and I'm also kind of getting an echo of uh, R.B. Katai, a great uh, American painter that lived in London for 40 years or so. And here he's gotten back into his more decorative pattern painting. So they're calling this day and night, and uh, this is Chris's first major museum exhibition in the United States. And I would guess that this gallery would constitute the, the night part of the show. 
Well, the only problem is that uh, the reproductions of these works, they don't really, you can't really distinguish one painting from another, so I'm not going to tell you what the titles are, because I can't tell. And uh, I was thinking that this kind of refers to maybe a Rothko Chapel. Oh, we get a little light reflecting off this one. These are all just straight oil on linen. Well, this is interesting. I'm looking at this piece. It looks like an Ad Reinhardt from a distance. And then when you angle across here, start getting some of this graded light, you can see the figures start to appear. I don't know how much you're going to capture on this video, but uh, we're trying. Now I heard someone commenting that uh, they wish they could come back when they turn the lights on in here. Said they could see a sword in there, okay. This is pretty subtle stuff, uh, and uh, you can only really see this with grating light on here, but with the grating light, you can see kind of a uh, spectrum of dark violets, Prussian blues, blacks, grays. figures on horses. Actually, as your eyes adjust to the light, you can see more and more. I uh, have to appreciate Chris's ambition with the, the new direction, kind of the strange experimental palette lighting conditions and yeah these are all serious paintings these are big you can almost see a change it's almost like shark skin uh, it's a change in the, the color as you come up and uh, look at it through the grating light This is James Calm reporting on Chrysophilus night and day here at the new museum. Thank you, Kate. Was beautiful guys you really turned it on there <laughs> that was great yeah. Can I give